Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Uh, welcome to the new course of Power Plants. Uh, this is Dr. Muhammad Alam Zaif Khan, uh, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, University of Engineering and Technology, Peshawar. Uh, the course is about the thermal power plants and some of its uh, accessories. Um, if we are talking about the thermal power plants uh, in this course, we would be talking about the gas power plants, uh, which is based on the Joule cycle. We will be talking about the steam power plants uh, based on the Rankine cycle. And we will be talking about the combined cycle power plants, which would be based on the uh, combination of the Joule cycle and the Rankine cycle. Uh, as the gas power plants uh, been discussed in the previous courses uh, as well, so in here we will be definitely looking at the um, when looking at it, but when we are talking uh, 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 in a combined cycle power plants, uh, but it's but itself we will be not actually uh, going in the details of the uh, gas power plants. Uh, while our major course will uh, move around uh, uh, steam power plants and the uh, combined cycle power plants. Uh, if we look at the energy uh, or the energy scenario or the power plant scenario of the world uh, so currently uh, if i would say like there are around 30 percent power plants based on coal and 30 percent and the same 30 percent around 30 percent uh, power plant based on petroleum products uh, furnace oil and so on and so forth um, the nitrogen gas power plants are around like 20% uh, and the nuclear around 5%, 5, 5 to 6% and non-hydro uh, hydro, uh, is around like uh, 2, to, 2 to 3% and non-hydro renewable are around uh, 11 to 12%. Uh, so you can imagine like uh, the major chunk of the power plants are the thermal power plants. So it's around like 80% of the power plants are still the thermal power plants. Uh, although the world is going towards the renewable resources, but still the major portion of the power plants are still the thermal power plants. Uh, coming to the Pakistan scenario, so the fossil fuel power plants, which based on the furnace oil, coal power plants, gas power plants, they are around like 68% uh, in Pakistan. The nuclear share is roughly um, around 8% and the hydro is around 21% while the wind is actually occupying around, uh, around 3%. That's the, the data uh, from 2018. So in this course, we would be looking at the various uh, components even and we would be looking at the various cycles of the power plants. And the first cycle we would be discussing in our course would be the rank and power cycle. So the rank and power uh, cycle itself is the uh, basic building block of the steam power plants. Uh, the component of this power plant, the steam, steam up power plant, as shown in this figure 1.1, um, we would be uh, this this figure is itself divided in different uh, parts like uh, part uh, areas, part A, part B, part C, part D. Um, in the first few lectures, we would be discussing uh, or focusing ourselves on the part B section, which is the Rankine cycle, which is the basic Rankine cycle. Yeah. Um, in our, in our uh, total course, we would be definitely looking at different other components. For example, we would be discussing the boiler part as well. We would be discussing the stack part. We would be discussing the, the condenser part. We would be discussing the cooling towers and so on and so forth. Uh, but yes, in the start, we would be uh, just focusing ourselves to the part B section, uh, which is actually the basic uh, rank kind cycle or the rank kind cycle parts of it. So now the ideal rank kind cycle. So what do we mean by first thing first? What do we mean by ideal rank kind cycle? Ideal would mean like the, the cycle which does not have got irreversibility in it. So we would be talking about the Rankine cycle to uh, which does not have got irreversibility in it and that would be actually the most efficient uh, or in a sense the efficient power plant. Um, 
as of the Brighton cycle and as of the other cycle, as uh, the, the, the other power cycle, um, the corner cycle. So the Brankan cycle itself has got four components, uh, the turbine, the condenser, the pump and the boiler. Um, as of the other thing, the turbine is uh, other power plants, uh, the turbine itself is used to uh, for the power generation. Uh, that means like it is actually the main component which actually use the heat energy and it convert the heat energy into the work done. Uh, mostly the, when we when I'm saying like the heat energy, it is the enthalpy of the in, uh, enthalpy energy which is actually utilized by the turbine and it is expanded in a turbine uh, that is actually to produce some power output. So starting from state one, let's suppose and, and that state one is at the inlet of the turbine. State one inlet of the turbine, let's say, and over here. So from one to two, actually, there would be expansion in a turbine. So what normally a turbine do? Again, I'll say like it is it is taking the energy, and that is energy in form of enthalpy, and that energy is expanded in a turbine to produce some work done. So that means like the turbine would be utilizing the energy which is actually in energy in terms of enthalpy so the turbine work would be equal to the change in the enthalpy let me say like why why we just say like a change in enthalpy over here because from the steady steady flow energy equation we already say like the heat transfer from the turbine the kinetic energy change in a turbine and the potential energy change in a turbine is actually ignored or it's I say like we would not we're not considering that one so if we are ignoring that one the only energy that would be responsible for the change uh, for for the turbine work done would be the only the change in enthalpy so that's why what we are saying like the work done of the turbine would equal to the change in enthalpy of the system or uh, change in enthalpy in a turbine so also the turbine itself, uh, sorry, also the in, in, uh, enthalpy itself is a com comprising of, uh, comprised of internal energy and the work energy, which is actually PV, U plus PV. So that means like the, the enthalpy itself is internal energy and the flow energy. That means like the energy which is coming into the turbine, uh, and which will be actually utilizing that energy and then expanding out of the turbine. So once it reach at two, the enthalpy would be totally utilized or not totally utilized. In other words, the enthalpy would be reduced from a higher state towards the lower state. Now we have lost energy. Now the from two itself, it is at the inlet of the condenser. So what does condenser do? Condenser would actually throw the extra energy, which was or the heat energy, which was inside the 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 uh, working fluid. So the in order to to I would say like to order to go back to the 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 higher state, which is the uh, maximum enthalpy. Um, so that mean like from two to three there would be the heat transfer and that heat transfer would be heat transfer out of the system in a, and that is actually in a condenser. So condenser itself is kind of a heat exchanger in which there would be actually flowing uh, the, the, the working fluid will flow from two to three while there would be actual cooling, uh, cooling water which actually flowing into the condenser and it will be taking away its heat and that would be taking away its heat out of the system. So from two to three, heat is going out of the system. Now we are, once the heat is removed from the working fluid, and in this case, we have got a working fluid as a water. So once we have taken away the heat of the system, now we do not have got the internal energy left now. Now we do not have got the pressure and volume, sorry, PV left now, PV energy, which is flow energy left now. So we have to, in order to go back to the initial state, which is actually at the higher energy state, 
we have to provide with the pressure energy and also we have to provide it with the internal energy so the pressure energy itself would be provided from three to four and that would be actually in a pump so from three to four we are compressing the liquid and the compressing the liquid to a higher pressure state and that higher pressure state would be at four now at four itself the 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 working fluid which is actually now at the higher pressure it will now be fed to the the heat exchanger in in which there would be actually heat transfer to the system or to, sorry heat transfer to the to the working fluid now once the heat is transferred to the working fluid now which the uh, at which point the working fluid was liquid at initially four now once we supply heat to the system heat to the working fluid it will be now converted to steam and at state one we are back to the to the steam and then so on the process will continue or the process will actually or the the cycle will continue that so many things need to be discussed uh, in this cycle actually so from one to two um, as i said earlier as well over here so from one to two we have got expansion in our turbine so when I, when we are saying like expansion in a turbine so we would assume or we would we would we would say like we would want it that expansion should be isentropic expansion Isent by isentropic mean like it there should be no irreversibility involved when we are expanding the gas from state one to state two so isentropic expansion or reversible adiabatic expansion so there, there should be no irreversibility associated with it there should be no heat transfer in and out of the system and the process should be more efficient so that means like from one to two in a turbine we have got the isentropic expansion now when we are we are we are at two and, and then the two is at the inlet of the condenser so at the inlet of the condenser from when we are removing heat in from two to three the heat is removed in such a way that there is no pressure changing in a system if there is a pressure change in a system so either the the wall of the the condenser would be damaged or either there would be there will be some restriction into into the flow of the working fluid so in order to remove the the uh, heat from the system heat from the working fluid so the process should be constant pressure process so that mean like in a condenser from two to three the process is a constant pressure process then from three to four again we would want the pressure or the pump to work more efficiently or 100 percent efficient so that mean like we should also consider or we should also opt for the isentropic compression so that mean from three to four it will be isentropic compression again um, isentropic again i'm saying isentropic compression now from four to one again we would be saying like there should be no pressure changes when we are supplying heat to the system with the same analogy so that mean like from four to one we are supplying heat to the system and that supply heat to the system is constant pressure heat addition now looking at the ts diagram temperature entropy diagram and let me draw the temperature and entropy diagram on a phase diagram and phase diagram of a liquid of a water or vapor dome of the water so let me assume like again in an initial state i am starting from state one and that is actually at the inlet of the turbine so state one is at inlet of the turbine and we are calling it at the inlet of the turbine let it be at saturated liquid so when it is expanding and that expansion is actually isentropic expansion so from state one to state two there would be isentropic expansion entropy would remain constant and it will actually come to a state two state two is exit of the turbine at inlet of the condenser so 
that means like when I'm ex expanding from state one to two, there will be work done out of the system, work done from the turbine, and there would be the enthalpy would change from enthalpy H1 to enthalpy H2, which is enthalpy would be dropping. Now, if you can imagine the state two is inside the vapor dome, so that mean like when we are actually expanding from the turbine, there would be some some wetness in it, and that mean like steam will tot will not be totally dry. But we feed that steam uh, to the condenser, and the condenser would go from state from state two to three, and that two to three is actually at the constant pressure process as we have discussed. So that means like from two to three, there will be heat removal, and heat removal will be at the constant pressure process as we are all also inside the vapor dome so the constant pressure process is inside the vapor dome is also constant temperature process as well so from two to three the process will be iso isobaric and also isothermal as well so then we are at the state three and assuming like when we are exiting the condenser we are at saturated liquid state so at the exiting exit of the condenser and inlet of the pump we are at state three and at state from state three to four we are compressing our liquid and so from three to four we are compressing our liquid so three to four is a isentropic compression over here. So now at four, the state of this is uh, of or the phase of the liquid is compressed liquid now, uh, and we are at the exit of the pump and inlet of the boiler. So now at the inlet of the boiler, the pressure or uh, uh, the pressure is now increased to a boiler pressure so we start heating it up so there would be two processes involved actually once we start heating it up the boiler will increase in a boiler the liquid temperature will increase and when it is increased it will be increased to a saturated state now so from 4 to 8 we have got a saturated satu uh, the, the the we have got the heating up and which mean like we have got the temperature also increasing and obviously there would be a little bit volume increase as well but once it reached at a which is saturated liquid now if we supply heat in the boiler it will not change the temperature but it would only and only change the phase so from a to one the process is again i'm saying like the process is isobaric as well and as well as isothermal so moving back from one to two we have got isentropic expansion from two to three constant pressure heat removal from three to four isentropic compression in which we supply some work done to the pump from four to four to one we have got constant pressure heat addition and which we have supplied some heat into the system from two to three the constant pressure heat heat removal is also isothermal heat removal as well while from four to eight and from eight to one it was again isobaric but also isothermal so from one, four to one it is isobaric process but only in inside the vapor dome from A to 1, it is isothermal process. So summarizing it, process 1 to 2, isentropic expansion of the working fluid to a turbine from a saturated vapor state to a condenser pressure, the quality would decrease from the unity. From process 2 to 3, the heat transfer from the working fluid as it flow at the constant pressure, pre condensed with a saturated liquid at state three. Process three to four, isentropic compression in a pump to state four, 
in a compressed liquid region and process 4 to 1 heat transfer to the working fluid as it flow at the constant pressure through the boiler to complete the cycle. Now comparing the cycle with the Brighton cycle, if you say like in a Brighton cycle, we have got these four same four component. That means like we have got same same uh, turbine. Uh, that means like we have got same heat exchange or heat removal at a constant pressure. We have got from let's suppose from uh, same compression uh, in our compressor, and also we have got the heat addition in a constant pressure process in a combustion chamber. So. It seems like we have got the same processes, isentropic compression and expansion, uh, constant pressure, heat removal and addition. But the TS diagram of, cons of the Brighton cycle does not or is not same as the TS diagram of the Rankine cycle. It's the only reason like in a Brighton cycle, there is no phase transformation or there is no phase change of the gases while in the Rankine cycle we have got the phase change from 2 to 3 and also from A to 1. So that means like the, the in a Brighton cycle 2 to 3 is constant pressure only but not isothermal but in a, in a, in a Rankine cycle it is both. Why? In a Brighton cycle from A to 1, it is actually, or from 4 to 1, it is constant pressure process. But in Rankine cycle, it is from A to 1, it is also the isothermal process. So that's why the TS diagram and also the HS or PH diagram of the Brighton cycle would be a little bit different than the Rankine cycle. This is what we what, what we say like we have got the ideal Rankine cycle, which mean like we do not have got any uh, we do not have took account into uh, any irreversibility into it. Now looking at the or comparing itself with the corner cycle, if you remember from the previous fundamental courses uh, fundamental course of thermodynamics. The corner cycle itself comprises of two different cycles. Isentropic expansion and compression and isothermal heat addition and removal. So if you look at look at the TS diagram of the corner cycle, it's more like similar to the TS diagram of the Rankine cycle, but with a difference, a little bit difference. So if I would draw line straight over here, some something like this. So now it seemed like, if, and, and I would draw, uh, I would write it like one, two, three, and four, and let it be like these uh, in a circle represent the TS diagram of the corner cycle. So you can, if you can imagine like Rankine cycle, there's a little bit difference of work done in a Rankine cycle and a work done of a corner cycle. Uh, remember from the previous classes, area enclosed in a TS diagram is the work done of the cycle. So that means like the area enclosed by a, a Rankine cycle and area enclosed by a corner cycle differ by this force. So that mean like the efficiency of the corner cycle is more than the efficiency of the Rankine cycle. And it is the reason that in a Rankine cycle, the heat is, or we start supplying heat at this point over here and in a Carnot cycle, we start supplying heat at this point, which is actually at a higher temperature. And let me just give you a, a very quick example. Like if we start supplying heat at, let's suppose, 20 degrees centigrade, and we start supplying heat at, let's suppose, 80 degrees centigrade. 
So obviously the heat required to raise the uh, or the heat required for water to boil from 20 degrees centigrade would be greater while the heat required uh, to boil a water from 80, 80 degrees centigrade would be less. So obviously it's the same reason like if we, if we start heat supplying at this point which is actually at four of the the re ragtime cycle and if we supply heat at this point so obviously the the energy which we would be required at this point of the rank time cycle is much higher by the energy required at this point so that's why the the heat the the corner cycle have got much efficiency than the rank time cycle and another word and we would be discussing it later on that the average temperature at which the heat is supplied at the corner cycle is higher than the average temperature at which the heat is supplied at the Rankine cycle. Uh, let me show it over here. So if I'm saying like the average temperature, so the average temperature of the corner cycle would be the, the average between them two temperature and it will definitely in between them. But if I'm looking at the average temperature of the Rankine cycle, so that will be the temperature average on this temperature, the this temperature and this temperature. So obviously, if I'm taking average of these three, so it will be less than the corner cycle. So that means like the average temperature at which the heat is supplied in a corner cycle is higher than the average temperature at which the heat is supplied in a Rankine cycle. So that's why the efficiency of the corner cycle is much better than the efficiency of the Rankine cycle. And then obviously we'll be looking at or discussing the same phenomena in a superheat cycle and a preheat cycle. But before we actually go to the, the, the enhancement of the uh, Rankine cycle, let's discuss the performance itself of the Rankine cycle. So by performance, we mean like what would be the thermal efficiency of the power plant, what would be the power output of the power plants, and what would be the heat input of the power plant. So the, the performance parameter, so we have got a performance parameter of the thermal efficiency, we have got a performance parameter of the, the, the work output, and we have performance parameter of the heat input. And there is another one we would call it as a heat rate and obviously we'll be discuss it later on so the thermal efficiency obviously gauge the extent of which energy input to the working fluid is passing through a boiler and it is converted to the work done so in terms of efficiency we would be looking at the work output divided by the heat input so the work output is actually in a turbine but obviously there is actually an input of the work done in the pump as well so we would be actually subtracting that from this one. So the turbine work minus pump work divided by the heat in would be the thermal efficiency. And in terms of enthalpy, as discussed earlier, so in terms of enthalpy, it would be H1 minus H2 minus H4 minus H3 divided by H1 minus H4. And you can just look at these one, these, uh, so that would be H1 minus H2 and that would be actually it's the expansion in a uh, in a turbine h4 minus h3 would be the pump work and obviously the heat supply from 4 to 1. now the uh, the net work output in terms of heat is q in minus q out divided by q in so obviously this this thermal efficiency should be equal to this thermal efficiency as obviously it's the same thing anyway. So as discussed earlier, the heat rate uh, is also one of the performance parameters. So heat rate is the amount of energy that is added by the heat transfer to the cycle normally in BTU to produce the unit network usually in kilowatt hour. So accordingly, the heat rate, which is inversely proportion to thermal efficiency, uh, has a unit of BTU per kilowatt. So in other words, the less heat rate would mean like the most thermal efficiency. Uh, on another word, uh, it would be required like the we supply less heat to the system and we need more power output of the system. 
so that uh, and then there is another uh, uh, performance parameter or performance uh, achieving uh, sorry they describe the power plant performance and that is we call it as a back, uh, back work ratio back work ratio is actually the uh, work done of the pump divided by the work done of the turbine uh, usually in a in a large power plants uh, there are uh, many pumps installed the pumps for a feed water pumps for a for a condenser uh, moving condenser water in and out of the system and also many other things so obviously there would be actually pump of the work required which actually we have uh, we would be discussing later on and that would be actually in terms of uh, uh, net power output and gross power output so work of the pump is one of the important factor so work of the pump divided by work of the turbine is what we call it as, as the back work ratio uh, discussed a little bit earlier in in this lecture i said like the the ts and hs diagram uh, of the Rankine cycle and a Brighton cycle would not be similar and, and the slope of dh by ds would not be same it is because like in, in a Brighton cycle there is no no uh, phase change while in a Rankine cycle there is actually a phase change as well uh, we have not actually uh, considered the irreversibility uh, you can check like what would be the irreversibility when there is irreversibility in in a, in, a, in a process or in a system uh, that mean like there would be entropy generation and when there is entropy generation there some of the useful energy would be it would be lost or in other words so some of the useful energy will not be utilized in a work done and that mean like there would be less work uh, the Rankine cycle is less efficient than the corner cycle for the given maximum and minimum temperature uh, as I said earlier uh, but definitely it is the most practical power power, uh, power power cycle now moving to the uh, enhancement and effect of the design parameter on the Rankine cycle 